Welcome to Electro Online. Now the compound adwood machine. How do we solve a problem using the Lagrangian with the compound adwood machine? And it turns out this is what the Lagrangian is really good for. This would be very difficult to do using a different kind of technique. All right, let's see what we have. We have two pulleys. Let's call it pulley A and pulley B. On pulley A, we have mass M1. On the other side, we have pulley B, which contains two masses, M2 and M3. Just to make it easier later to see what the results look like and make sense out of the results, we're going to assume that M1 has less mass than M2 and M3 combined, and that M3 is larger than M2. It doesn't have to be that way. We can use it in any combination possible, but this, is, this way we can see what the answers look like later and make sense out of them. Also notice that pulley A and pulley B have no mass. Now, the distance to M1, let's call it X1, the distance to mass 2, let's call it X2, and the distance to M3, let's call it X3. But since the masses M2 and M3 can be moving independently to mass M1, because of that, what we need to do is set up two coordinate systems. We have an X coordinate system and a Y coordinate system. And therefore, X1 can be considered X, so the distance from the ceiling to there, let's call that X. And then the distance on the other side to the pulley, we'll call that L sub A minus X. That was the same technique we used in the previous video, where we had another mass here, but now we have a pulley, but it was still called L minus X. In this case, we'll have it as L sub A, because it's referenced to pulley A. Notice that L sub A and L sub B are simply just arbitrary constant. It doesn't matter what the values of those are. Now, the distance from pulley B to M2, let's call that Y, and therefore the distance from pulley B to M3, we'll call that L sub B minus Y. Again, L sub B is some arbitrary constant. Now, defining the distance X1, X2, and X3 can be done as follows. X1 is simply X. X2 will have to be this distance right here, plus y, so there'll be L sub A minus x plus y, which is distance x2 from the ceiling to m2. And to get to m3, we'll have to add this distance plus this distance, and so you can express L3 like that. Also notice that we have the positive x direction and positive y direction in a downward direction, which means that v2, oh, let's go here, v1 is equal to a minus x dot, we expect m1 to be moving upward, which is a negative direction relative to our reference point. V2 is expected to, well, depends. We know that it's going to be going downward relative to the X coordinate, but upward relative to the Y coordinate. So a negative Y dot and a positive X dot. For M3, notice that it'll be going downward relative to the Y coordinate and downward relative to the x coordinate, so v3 must be a positive y dot and a positive x dot. So now we have all the variables defined. Let's go ahead and work out the Lagrangian for this particular problem. Notice I wrote the equation twice, once for the x coordinate and once for the y coordinate. We have two independent coordinate systems, x and y, so we'll have to work those out separately in this fashion. But they'll be using the same kinetic energy and potential energy equations. So let's go for the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is equal to, we have three objects that are moving, M1, M2, and M3. That means we have one half M1 times V1 squared plus one half M2 V2 squared plus one half M3 V3 squared. Now we have to write in what V1, V2, and V3 are, which means the kinetic energy can be written as one half times m1 times v1 squared. And v1 squared is going to be minus x dot squared, but when we square the negative goes away. We don't need parentheses here. We simply write x dot squared plus one half m2 times v2 squared. v2 is the difference between those, or I should say the sum of a minus y dot plus an x dot. We square that, we get minus y dot plus x dot quantity squared plus one half m3 times v3, which is going to be y dot plus x dot squared. So, well, we could write as x dot plus y dot quantity squared. So now we have the kinetic energy of our system. Hmm, should we multiply those out? We could. 
but let's see here. It might be easier to do that because later on we'll have to take the parcels with respect to x and y. And now uh, we'll leave it like that. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's just leave it in that form and we'll continue. Potential energy is equal to, well, let's call this the reference point. Potential energy equals zero to ceiling. So for m1, we have a minus m1g times the distance from the ceiling, which would be x. Minus m2g times the distance to m2. The distance to m2 would be equal to this quantity right here. It will be L sub A minus X plus Y. L sub A minus X plus Y. And minus M3G. Again, why do we have a minus there? Because it's that distance below the ceiling. So we have a negative potential energy. It will be minus M3G times the distance, which is this quantity right here. That would be equal to L sub A minus x plus L sub b e minus y. So now we also have the potential energy. Remember that the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian is equal to the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So if we're going to take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x and the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y, we do have to realize we have to take that from the negative potential energy. So the negative potential energy is equal to the positive of this, m1gx plus m2g times L sub A minus x plus y plus m sub 3g times L sub A minus x plus L sub B minus y. So this is the negative potential energy because when we take the parcel of the Grandian, it would have to be respect to the negative potential energy. Now we can go ahead and take the partials. Partial of L with respect to X is equal to. We go over here, we have one here, we have one there, we have an X there. Let's see what we get. That will give us an M1G. This is a minus X times this, which gives us a minus M2G. And here we have a minus X times this, that gives us a minus M3G. So here we have the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x. Now we'll do the same for the partial with respect to y. The partial of L with respect to y is equal to. We have a y over here, that's a plus, so it gives us a m2g. And we have another y over here, what's a minus, that gives us a minus m3g. So now we have the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to y. All other components go to zero. Here's another thing we should look at. Remember when I said that L sub A and L sub B can be any arbitrary constant? Notice that when we take the partials, there's no variables associated with this, there's no variables associated with that, so that just simply goes to zero. Okay, now taking the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. The partial of L with respect to x dot is equal to. So now we come over to the kinetic energy portion right here. Here we have two times this, that becomes m1 x dot plus. Here we have to use the product rule. Two times this will give us m2 times what's inside the parentheses, minus y dot plus x dot, times the derivative, what's inside, and the derivative of what's inside is simply one, plus the derivative of this, this times this gives us m3 times the quantity x dot plus y dot times the derivative of what's inside, which will, again would be 1. Okay, notice I have a combination of x dots and y dots here. I'm going to separate those, or, well, not separate them, I'm going to combine them. And so this is equal to, we have an x dot, an x dot, and an x dot. So this becomes m1 plus m2 plus m3 times x dot, and for the y dot, I have a minus here and a plus there, that gives us a, um, hmm, that gives us a plus a minus m2 plus an m3 times y dot. 
So this is the parcel of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot. If we now take the time derivative of that, hmm, with respect to, let's see here, let's take the time derivative. So we have the partial of L with respect to x dot, and we take the time derivative of that, the ddt of that, that is equal to, when we look at that, so this simply becomes the quantity m1 plus m2 plus m3 times x double dot plus the quantity minus m2 plus m3 times y double dot. And now we have this quantity right here. And finally, we're going to take the partial derivative of L with respect to y dot. The partial of L with respect to y dot is equal to. And so we take that quantity right there. This goes to 0. And here we end up with 2 times, so we get m2 times the quantity minus y dot plus x dot times the derivative of what's inside, but since we have a negative in front here, we have to multiply this times the negative 1. Plus 2 times 1 half is 1, m3 times what's inside, x dot plus y dot to the first power times the derivative inside, and that stays the same. So this simply turns these two around, and so this can be written as, and let's combine the x's and the y's. We have a minus 2 and a plus 3. So this gives us a minus m2 plus m3 times x dot. And this should be a 3 here. Let me write that clearly. All right. So again, we have a minus 1 times an x. That gives us a minus x dot times m3. And we have an x dot times ooh, yeah, m2 and an x dot times m3. So that's correct. And for the y dots, this minus 1 times this becomes a plus, so it would be plus m2 plus m3 times y dot. And now when we take the time derivative of that, the dt of the partial of L with respect to y dot, that is equal to, take that, we get a minus m2 plus m3 times x double dot, plus an m2 plus m3 times a y double dot. And there we have the final portion. Now we can go ahead and calculate these two quantities. Now notice I'm running out of board space. So what I'm going to have to do is erase some of this and then put this back on the board and continue with this exercise. Otherwise, I don't have any place to put that. And it's a long problem. So. Stay tuned and I'll continue with this in just a moment. Okay.